hey guys so in this video I am going to show you how I turned this into this welcome to after painting so what does one do when one has finished painting the great majority of their never-ending horde of unpainted lead board gaming miniatures I don't know so that's what we're gonna find out in this show uh, so stay with me uh, leave your comments suggestions and concerns and let's go and see what life is like after painting okay guys so we are going to go through this step by step. This is going to be a big project. And I'm not sure how long it's going to take. But the first thing I'm going to do is kind of go over what I bought here. And kind of talk to you about my plans. So this is some kind of children's play box. Sort of what you would see you know, maybe in a doctor's office. Or somewhere in a corner of a government office building. To kind of keep kids occupied. Now in and of itself it's actually not bad. Uh... If I remove these, which I, I believe are like some kind of elevation attachments, you can see here, you know, that there's streets and roads. And I mean, if you were really desperate, you could uh, put some cars in some of your buildings right on there and play with it like that. Uh, I've measured this out. It measures probably a little less than four feet long and a little maybe a little more than three feet wide so it's not quite four by four but uh with something like this you you want it to take up as less space as possible now i got this at a thrift store and i'm not going to tell you what i paid for it until after the build is over and then you guys can tell me whether you think it was worth it you can sit, see by the panels that i i never had one of these with a kid because i didn't put this together but the way these panels work, if I can get some, uh, if I can get some, uh, if I can get some uh, leverage in here, some purchase. These lift out. <clears throat> I'm not going to be able to do it that way, which is kind of a good thing. It means you don't have to worry about your project popping out. But these lift out. And essentially, it looks like they're kind of wall panels or door paneling it is very heavy and very thick so it's like a thick mdf so each one of these are i mean are they they weigh a good amount uh i don't know if you could hear that as it went down but it has a nice stud you know these have been shellacked in some sort or uh let cured so i'm gonna have to decide whether I'm going to deal with that. I'm probably not going to deal with that side. I'm just going to cover up this side. I mean, if you wanted to, you could just use this side and then always flip this back over if you needed to play with it. But for what I'm doing, that's not practical. Now, you can see here the whole box, which I really like this box itself. And if it didn't have the panels, you know, you could even maybe look at putting some type of... Uh, uh, insulation foam panels building your own I mean these things are already slotted in here so you could literally replace this with your own uh, insulation panels you could even buy a 4x4 four four, uh, map that they sell like from deep cuts and cut it to size just kind of trim the edges and then fit it in here again you know maybe even over top of these boards without even necessarily uh, gluing it down just fit it right over the boards or you could buy a spray adhesive, spray the boards, and then lay it over there. I'm not going to be doing that, obviously, if you guys saw the finished product. What I am thinking of doing, because I have a couple of options. So, obviously, the boards, I, I am going to spray and prime those, probably texture them. But what I need to decide is what I'm going to do for surface treatment. Now, my first goal was to do a very easy priming and texturing and painting and then just kind of having a brown or a green top and then you could just add or take things away as you wanted to and you know it would just kind of be your your under surface but 
Eh, that didn't sound too fun. You know, that, that, that sounded more or less uh, boring, right? Because I, I, I don't even need this whole box for that. I could just keep these here, you know, and just lay them out on my floor or something. Uh, that is one thing I don't like about this is it is very low, but obviously being designed for children, uh, you know, it's going to sit low. Now, if you have a four by four table, you could sit this on that table because like I said, each side is less than four feet. So it would sit up on your table and you could actually kind of uh, put your hand down in different parts of it and play with it like that. Another thing you could do if you were very enterprising and say you wanted to make a dungeon complex out of this is you could put the board down here, right? You could fit your boards in here, maybe uh, drill them in and then you could drill or saw through here to make tunnels or lanes. Or something and have an interior complex right or you could even do a separate board and in that way you could close it back up with that and you'd have an upper level and a bottom level and so I have not I have not thought about doing that yet uh, it is an ideal where if I can get some kind of bottom board or surface and then connect that I could do a whole separate thing on the inside from whatever I do on the outside now, at the time being, that isn't something I, I'm probably going to pursue because uh, I will be moving soon. And so I'm going to need to turn this upside down or sideways. And I don't want to be in a situation where everything's going to fall out or tumble over. Or what, if I have a bunch of little pieces in here, I have to move them. But um, that is something, you know, that I would like to take a look at maybe in the future is kind of uh, using this inside space because like I said I really like the way it's divided like that and uh, these shouldn't be too hard to cut through this is MDF so you would want to maybe get some kind of drill or some kind of saw to cut through there uh, or you could just model on doors and just you know move the figure through the other side and pretend it's it's an open door you don't really have to have it as an open door but uh, so the only other thing about this which I, I will not probably be able to deal with now is these kind of logos these are not stickers unfortunately so i can't take them off they look like this is kind of painted on here and then uh they shellacked over it so the only way i could get that off is if i kind of spray painted the whole back or if i sanded it down and sanded it off which you know, that's a lot of work right now, and it's not really accomplishing nothing other than the way it looks. I have not decided if I'm going to spray paint the outside. I'm sure I will, but, uh, you know, I need to kind of make up my mind how that would look, what color would look best, and things like that. Because, uh, I mean, if I'm just going to do it black, I'd almost just rather leave it like it is. Uh, so, other than that, though, I think our first step that we are going to have to do is take each three of these boards and kind of decide I want each board to be a separate section of a bigger board but to almost be independent I know I want at least one of the boards to have a water feature a river maybe a large lake or something like that and then you'll have two boards on the opposite one I think should have some type of uh, raised features uh, probably not necessarily some mountains because these here are actually going to make great surface tops as mountains and what I like about these is if you do it right you can either do it as a half structure like that where each half lays up against the wall kind of like that or you can put them together and you can do one kind of one large structure Right, so when you do that, you obviously want to make sure that whatever you put up there is compatible, that one side meets with the other side. And so I will, I will give this some thought. Uh, I'm kind of inclined to leave it as blank as possible simply because I think it would make a great site to fight over, to put troops over and things. Uh, but, you know, you obviously want to put some type of uh, scenery on there, some type of decoration. I've also decided... You know, I probably will maybe put some type of uh, filler over that and smooth it down. And then that way, when I, uh, when I finish off the feature, you won't see those screws there. Uh, 
But so that is kind of where we're at. This is just our first stage, kind of our planning stage. The next thing I am going to do is I, I'm going to come up with a rough plan for the three boards. Uh, and then from there, we will start, you know, kind of deciding on what board we're going to start with first. See you then. All right, guys, welcome back to our big board build. So what you are looking at here is my preliminary plans for the boards and I'm not sure how good this is going to show up so I will I will zoom in closer as we go but I I kind of wanted to give you a general outline of it now there's a lot going on here but essentially we are looking at the three different boards and like I said we're going to try to go into each one in a little bit of depth uh, detail I think the easiest one is the middle section where I've decided I want to put a river running the length of the middle section here then on either side I'm going to put blast craters as if artillery shells have hit it so this is going to be a World War II board uh, I'm also hoping to model a small trench here a small trench there and then I don't know this area will probably just be general debris or other items like that just unrough ground but in the middle of this is going to be the river and here is kind of like a dirt road leading from this other board uh, I will probably put a dirt road or an impression of a dirt road leading to that this one is obviously may have been blown out or I may move this this blast over there and the ideal being here is that I have a uh, bridge, a model bridge that I can lay over this area. So if the bridge is blown, then obviously you're going to have to ford the river. And there's only one ford here. And obviously that's going to be well defended. But other than that, I mean, the action will take place between the bridge. Now to the right of the river section is going to be this built up section probably the the most intact portion of the board uh, a community so to speak there's going to be a road here with kind of a uh, a turnaround in there and then the road leads off the board and I wanted to have all of the roads leading off the board just because it might make some scenarios where people have to fight their way on and through and cross different boards so uh, you have a point where they will come on or off this is going to be just grass. This will be some uh, corn growing and some vegetables uh, that will be growing here. So I will make patches for that. This will be uh, just simply some loose gravel. This will be a train track that will run to this compound here. So I will drop one of my, my bigger buildings in there. And you will see there's going to be a wall surrounding that compound. On the other side of the wall, there will be this footpath, and there will be these home plots. So there will be plots for three different homes. And this is so that we can do fighting from house to house, or I could always just pick up these homes, you know, and just use it just as empty uh, space uh, for, for something else in the future. Uh, there's going to be a grove here of uh, hedges and so forth, but this is called the estate. Not exactly sure what that's going to be yet, whether I'm going to buy something or just use something I got, maybe an old castle or something, uh, which can double. Uh, and I mean, obviously, I'm kind of committing to doing this as a modern board, but uh, the river section, for example, you could use as a fantasy board. Uh, you know, you could say the blast craters are from uh, cannonballs or catapults. Now the last board is going to have a kind of a larger forest area here because I like the idea of there being some forest blocking terrain where you could move, you know, scouts or rangers or anything through the forest for an objective or they can get cover. This is going to be a black asphalt, sort of like a big uh, parking lot. This is another road that is going to run through here and then run into the other board. Both of these boards will run into there. But really, I mean, the ideal is going to be if I was to remove this board and push it to the back, these two roads would be able to meet up and then that would be one large built up section that we could play over. 
Uh, and this other, on the other side of this built up section is basically going to be a community. So these are homes. There will be a park in the middle. I was thinking of doing a cemetery, but I thought that'd be kind of odd right across from people's homes. So there will probably be a park, another little parking area with some asphalt, uh, some lighting, you know, off the block. Maybe some more black built up asphalt area, some type of alleyway, if I can model that, uh, and then the buildings. Uh, now, the ob object behind this board is this might be able to be used for some more modern games, which is why I'm going to be doing the black asphalt. I mean, you wouldn't normally see that in a European town during World War II, but uh, this will double as that. I mean, so, you know I mean, I'm sure there were some towns that were already using blacktop and asphalt back then and that's kind of the general layout i actually i don't think this will take me that long the biggest part is going to be getting the initial paint on the board and deciding how i'm going to texture it if i'm going to texture it uh, i was thinking of using some spray with the texture already in there to give little pebbles or rocks or i was going to Obviously, do it one color black and then just maybe spray some brown or something on there and then do the texturing as I go. So we haven't done that yet, but I kind of got a working idea. A lot of this might change. I kind of have an idea of how I'm going to do the road sections and things. Uh, like I said, the houses are not going to be fixed. They're going to be able to just drop down. So I'm just going to need to leave the space for them. Hopefully it will be big enough. Uh, now, the one problem with this design is I've made no allowance for the big old heel portion that came with the uh, board. And really, there was just nowhere logically to sit it in unless I was going to kind of drop it in the middle here as like a big mountain, uh, which, you know, I might still be able to do. I'm thinking of maybe using this piece and flipping it over and then kind of making it bare. And in that way, we will do that. Or maybe I will just do something separate with the with that big hill piece and decide if I want to use it in here or not. But for the time being, I'm kind of kind of happy with this. It's kind of something I had before, a board I had made a while back ago, but it's a little more uh, involved and bigger and stuff. But hopefully uh, it will work out. So keep uh, stay tuned, guys. Take care. God bless. Hey guys, just a quick update. So I am starting the middle board, which is going to be that river section. You can see here, I've kind of built up the banks. And then this part here is where the river is gonna run through. Haven't decided if I'm gonna use a real resin yet, or if I'm going to use a, uh, a tissue paper technique that I used on, my, uh, on the port that I did. Uh, I got that from a railroad guy. Uh, I'd like to use the resin, but the problem is with these open ends, I really have no way of containing it. Uh, but I am going to try to build this up with some uh, plaster. That's going to be the next step to put some thin plaster over all of this and see what it looks like. And then I'll make my decision about the resin after that. But just wanted to show you guys where we were at. Hey guys, so just wanted to show you some more of the progress. So I have got the uh, boards mounted with the uh, insulation foam. I've applied the first coat of paint to the insulation foam. And I've kind of painted out what is going to be my river. It is still not complete. I am going to use a toilet paper technique that I saw on a model train channel. To build up the rest of the river I if you want to know the technique I did it in my uh, I have a video on building a port I think it's like a three or four part series so you can watch that uh, but what I'm just showing you now is kind of where we got into uh, this I did on purpose you know I'm going to maybe dry brush that some more I want I wanted those to kind of look like that part of the ground had been damaged just to add some uh, features to it what I think I'm going to do next is I'm going to grass over these lanes on either side of the river uh, because if I do it after I finish my river I'm, I don't want some of that stuff getting into the uh, bottom of it 
and then I might not be able to get it out. So this way I'm going to do it for first, get all that flock on there, uh, let it dry solid. Then we will come back and finish up the river. And that board will pretty much be finished. Uh, you know, I may, I may do some more things to it. I've decided I'm probably not going to do the uh, fox holes and the uh, uh, blast blast markers or blast craters. I'm not going to build them into the board. I will model them so I can lay them on later. But I want to be able to use the board for other things. So I didn't want to just build them into the board. But that's where we're at now, guys. See you later. Hey, guys. So we are almost there. Two of the three boards are nearing completion. So this is going to be the river board. And as you can see, I'm using something called the toilet paper technique to create the river. So I have to let this toilet paper dry. It's just toilet paper and glue, really, guys. It's not, that's all you need to know. And then uh, if you want, you can go over it later with some type of, uh, I guess they call it like a lacquer or poly coat or something. So I don't know, I might have to buy that separately. Uh, this is going to be the opposite board where uh, I am going to have the buildings at. So most of the buildings would be here. I was tempted to do some type of sidewalks or walkways. I may I may model them in later, but I, I'm, I'm kind of being a little cautious about what I put in because I don't want these boards to be limited to modern games. I want to be able to use them in fantasy, historical, or whatever. So right now, as you can tell, all of the terrain is pretty generic. So... If I start putting in sidewalks or blacktop asphalt, then I pretty much cannot use that in a medieval game. But this could just be a medieval dirt road, which is why I made the road dirt. But on this one, I still have to do some dry brushing on the road. I'm probably going to put a few rocks in a few places, maybe a fallen tree or two. This one, I am going to line the uh, riverbed with a few rocks here or there. Uh, as far as the land areas, I don't really think I'm going to do anything else on those. I'm going to, because those are actually, I'm going to line those with trees and things. Uh, I thought about creating holes to stick the trees in, but I decided against that. I don't want to mark up the board. And most of my trees are self-standing anyway. So that's where we're at. The third board is, uh, is not been started on yet. It's actually under here. So you can see it's still kind of bare brown. That board I am thinking of trying to make look like a large kind of farmstead. So I just have to work on how I'm going to lay that out. All right, guys. We will let you know how it goes. So get a good look. And stay tuned because I am going to take you guys more or less step by step with how we did this. And we did not we did not do the bottom dungeon yet, but I think that is going to be that might happen as well. I think that might happen as well. Okay, guys, I thought in this segment I would break down exactly what I did with the game board kind of explain my thinking and uh, just give you kind of a close-up of the end result so I'm gonna start with this board here in the center and early on as I showed you guys in the plans I always wanted this to be a river section uh, running lengthwise down that and so I was able to pull that off just kind of using the toilet paper technique as I told you uh, I flocked the two sides different colors as kind of a demarcation line you know, didn't really have to do that, but, uh, you know, maybe in the future you want this to be a damaged part of the city or town and this to be kind of an undamaged part. Or you could just use it for maybe setting up if you're playing a game with somebody else. Uh, but so other than that, I've got the river, I've got the two banks. I was going to put a fort or something in, uh, but I kind of didn't. I mean, you could technically use this as a fort. And that's kind of why I dug it out like that. Uh, or you can throw a bridge over it and cover it up. But I didn't want to put the ford going through the river. I just didn't think that would uh, look right in every situation. 
you know, I dug this out and gouged that out on purpose because as I said, I wanted to maybe depict one side being more damaged and I knew I was going to run a road along there. So that just kind of shows where the road has kind of spilled off or maybe a vehicle has turned off and uh, has turned off into that portion of it. So having said that, let's look at this other road board. Now this was just a road built up basically using some road plaster that they sell for railroad train kits. Uh, the boards are not as big or wide as I would have liked because I really wanted to branch the road off more but it was just I just ran out of room so I just turned it here uh, just kind of a turn off the board this area these are some little tree stump thing branch stumps I got it Hobby Lobby I just kind of pulled them out of my you know out of my uh, extras box to kind of maybe look like there was a forest that was here at one time and the trees have been chopped down and then I left this area wide and open that's where all your buildings are gonna go uh, if you're playing a military game that's where all your figures would come on at or whatever you want to do you're gonna need that space if you want this to be playable so then we come down here to the last board this I wanted to look like pastoral farmland uh, so I have here again another section looking like maybe there's some rough woods off somewhere. So you could actually say anything in here. Their line of sight is blocked unless you're at the edge sort of using the boat action rules. Then you kind of have all of this green farmland. And then you kind of have your wheat fields and uh, your different uh, crops. Uh, this area obviously you could put a house, a building, a uh, you could put troops out here walking across in the open. You could turn this into a minefield, right? So you're going to kind of narrow their approach. They have the river blocking them. I mean, you're going to have some intense battles on this board because between trying to cross the river, between coming on here or coming on there, you know, you they're going to be right in each other's face very quickly. And that's how I like my games to play out. But I mean, there's still enough room on here that you can put, you know, a lot of things and, you know, just a lot of accessories. Oh, you guys thought I had forgot about the extra piece, that elevation. No, I didn't forget. There it goes, guys. There it goes. So I did not stick totally with my plans, but I'm actually very pleased nonetheless at all of the terrain, all of the... Uh, gaming that we got and we are going to get out of this project and I will be discussing this more a little later too all right guys see you soon Alright guys, so you probably will not be seeing this video until after you've seen the whole project uh, because this is kind of going to be my surprise at the end. But uh, I thought I wanted to videotape this just to show you guys kind of what I did and what it looks like because I'm not sure how it's going to look when I'm finished but it may not be obvious how I did this. So basically... What we've done is we've taken those two kind of mound sections for the kids area and I have topped them off with this uh, insulation foam. I then drew my pattern for this uh, my pattern for this trench complex that I wanted in here. I cut this out with basically a uh, a uh, not a hobby knife but a 
carpet cutter, the ones with the razors that slide up and slide down. And that was actually pretty easy. This stuff is real easy to cut if you get a sharp one. Just make sure you put a fresh blade in there. And then here I basically laid it through with some uh, coffee stirrer sticks. One of these I actually used popsicle sticks because it was just quicker uh, because they were a little bit thicker. The coffee stirrer one, I think this one looks better, but it took a whole night. Whereas with the, uh, with the sticks here, this one took, you know, maybe two hours. Uh, so, and I mean, you can put more detail on here. Like some people, uh, rough these up, you know, with a wire, uh, brush or something. I didn't bother to do that. I don't think that's going to make a much of a difference. This is not going to be a house. So, uh, but you can see I lined around the whole insides and I left these areas here in my plan because this is where the defenders will be able to put, uh, other other defenses so you know you could either put like an 88 here if you're the germans you might could put an mg emplacement here you could put a mortar or a cannon there you could maybe put a uh detached tank turret here or you could just have a command up here right where you have you know maybe a command directing the battle from here you know whatever i mean if you used it in vietnam you could land helicopters here so I really, uh, I really wanted to leave that flexibility on the top there. And the cool thing about doing it this way, instead of the way I had done it in the plans where I was going to dig the trenches into the board, is this here basically can be put away and stored. So if I want to put the trench in there, I can either incorporate it into the city or I can just play it as a standalone just as it is. So that, you know, this is just a very isolated trench. This could be used in some North Korean games. It can be used, like I said, in Vietnam, World War II, and so forth. So I'm really, I'm really kind of pleased how this came out. I will tell you here, these uh, supports, I, I had to glue these with super glue. The rest of this is uh, Eileen's Tacky Glue. I tried to use uh, some type of goo glue, that stuff at the dollar store, and it's terrible. It never dries. There's too much water in it. So the Eileen's will work, which is what I did this side. With this side, I actually use mostly uh, some of that liquid, uh, liquid um, glue gun glue. They sell that at the dollar store. But man, it stinks so much and gets in your nostrils, and it's very sticky to work with. So uh, on this side, I just went with the Eileen's, and it was much easier, you know, especially doing the side parts. Uh, so, but I wanted to show you guys what it looked like. I'm sure you've already seen the completed one, but I just wanted to put this in there so that if you were interested in doing this, uh, you can do it yourself. I think what is going to happen next, if, unless I change my mind, you guys know better than I do right now, is I'm going to, I'm going to apply that like the plaster or the caulk over this and just kind of give this a very rough look. Uh, this is all going to be uh, tinted or stained and then I'm going to just do like I intentionally left gaps in places because I'm going to put uh, I'm going to put like some uh, some dirt and things like that in there uh, to really make it look like it was dug out of the earth so all of these areas at some point should have like dirt effects in there I just uh, I just didn't want to do it now until I'm through staining and caulking and everything. Otherwise, uh, I, I wasn't sure. I didn't want the glue having the dirt stuck on the floors directly, although a little bit wouldn't hurt. But, you know, when you're doing this, don't be afraid to have imperfections and things like this area here. That adds to the detail. This makes it look like these areas were damaged and then repaired over time or they haven't been repaired at all. So... Whatever you do, you know, make sure you kind of leave some of these imperfections. But those are my tips, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Take care and God bless. <clears throat> okay, guys, so it is finished. And I thought I'd give you guys kind of an in-depth look at this and maybe just discuss a bit of how it turned out and everything that went into this to get us here. 
So the first thing I'm going to show you is, as you can see, this kind of mound of earth or embankment. This coating is actually homemade sculpta mode, where I basically took some plaster and I mixed it with uh, some of this paper mache that you can get at a uh, Hobby Lobby. Uh, and I created my own sculpta mode. Now, I saw that on a on a YouTube channel. And I forgot the guy's name that did it. Uh, it wasn't it wasn't Geek Gaming. Uh, it was another guy because that's where I learned about the bag. Uh, but so I was able to get this texture and everything. Of course, I wound up painting it. I didn't paint it it again. I put a wash over it, a black wash, which is kind of a technique I got from. Uh, there's a, a model kit they sell at Hobby Lobby where you can build rocks. And it's a technique they show you in there when you built your rocks, how to color them and blend them in. And so that's what I used on here, just at a larger scale. I kind of uh, scaled it up. The next thing you're going to see here are probably the next thing that would stand out is obviously the wood planking. All of this was done by hand, obviously using uh this side i use popsicle sticks this side i use coffee stirs but i wound up running out of the coffee stirs and i knew i wasn't going to have enough so then i converted to popsicle sticks but i kind of like it because it kind of shows you that maybe there's two different uh two different uh trench sections that were built you know maybe the marines are here on the left and the uh, army is here on the right it's obviously the army does things better than the marines. <laughs> I'm an old army veteran. I got to put a plug in for my core. Uh, the sandbags are made by uh, quick drying clay. And I had a pretty cool technique uh, for doing this many sandbags. I had saw Mel on Terrain Tutor show it. And their technique I thought took way too long. And there was just one change I did to the technique where you roll these up and segment them. And what that change was is, and maybe you can see it, you don't break them apart. So if you're going to be laying these sandbags, why do you have to break them all apart and lay down one sandbag at a time? So using the quick drying clay, I was actually able to form them up, dry them up, paint them. And then I just kind of laid them down here. And they broke on their own eventually uh, in smaller sections, but that didn't make much of a difference because then I would just use those as individual sandbags and then you can cover up you know, any of the white part that the paint might not have gotten through. Uh, these sticks were like very frustrating to get. I finally had to crazy glue them over and over again because your, ten, your hand tends to hit them. They tend to pop off. Uh, so I will tell you, if you're going to do something like this, do them last but not least. The trench was actually made on the platform using insulation uh, foam. And that's why it's not as deep. I mean, I could have used a thicker foam, right, and maybe had the trenches way up here. But I, I knew anything deeper and a 28 millimeter figure just wouldn't be able to show through. They, they would look deeper as far as a real deep trench, but they wouldn't really have any playability. So when I kind of, I measured these, I wanted to make sure that even in the trenches, these guys would still show up as being able to fire. And this is two levels of sandbags and he can still shoot over that. Even a guy kneeling can probably come right up to that. So that was that was something else I wanted to do. Uh, the, how long this took me? I would say this took over a period of a week by itself just to get this done. But I've always wanted some kind of gaming trench. And so now I kind of have one. And the nice thing... I think I got cut off. I was saying the nice thing about it is because it is a uh, modular, you know, because of the kit I got, you don't have to use it with the board. You can actually just plop this down on a mat, on a, any other kind of terrain you have. You could plop this down over a beach looking area and it's already set up. I mean, you know, I can put Germans in here, even though I have green sandbags 
it really doesn't matter. You know, I can put Germans in here or, you know, Americans or whatever. So I'm actually very pleased with this. Uh, my initial thought was just to make this one big mountain area, you know, and kind of cap it off. And then that way you could sit stuff up there. But this way I get the best of both worlds. I can still sit stuff up here in the trench as a mountain area if I want. I mean, and really, you know, I could even make some type of covering to go over here, put some dirt on it, and then sit stuff in there. You know, I just have to be careful about losing the uh, my sticks and things on there, my supports. But that's pretty much it, guys. That is, that is our, our trench section. So I was able to take those plans, and even though I wasn't able to... Uh, to put the trench on the actual board, I think this works out much better having the trench up here and being modular. Alright, take care. God bless.